Hey everybody, I'd like to tell you a, a bit of a, a story or maybe a, an insight about what I'm doing. And this, I realize, is, is only for the people that are going to start to spend the time to pay attention to what I'm saying. And what I'm, what I'm going to share here is that the people that actually listen and get the plan are going to be the people that get the gold. They're going to be the people that get exactly what they want, tremendous riches, their ideal job in a new paradigm infrastructure. But you have to pay attention to me. You have to follow the storyteller. And most of all, you have to believe what I'm saying. And what I've noticed over the years is that it doesn't matter what I say. I notice in people that they don't believe me. And as a wizard, you're sort of in the future. And you're bringing the future into the present. But let's say I think I'm about three years ahead of my time. Whatever I'm saying happens kind of three years later. But I'm seeing it in the present moment. And I'm attempting to get the people that I'm hanging with to see something around what could happen, the potentiality of what could happen either between us or in their life, or at least what I'm doing. And from the outside, because so much is happening in, in my inner world, it may appear that kind of nothing is happening. It may appear that, you know, on Facebook with 100 friends, nobody commenting, that nobody's paying attention to me. And no one's sort of, let's say, supporting me in any strong way. They're not sharing my videos. They're, I'm just kind of left alone. And... There are a number of people who I've lived with, spent time with, who, excuse me, who know what I'm doing. There are certain people that if you're around me long enough, if you hang out with me, I will show you what I'm working on and teach you what I've learned. But you have to hang out with me and put up with me and I have to put up with you. And I don't charge money. And most of my time has been spent serving people or being in places where I'm not actually being paid to be there. People may give me food, people may give me gas, people may give me whatever I need to live, but I'm not saying I need this amount per hour so I can be around you. One of my goals is to help 144 spiritual masters with their work and I found that when you surrender yourself fully to the God presence, that miracles happen and you don't have to kind of live in the normal way that most people do, where you have to work for a wage per hour to get ahead. Sometimes you have nothing and then you turn around a corner and someone jumps in and has $20 for gas and, and that's the next thing along the way. So you have to have a lot of trust when you're working with the Almighty that things are going to be okay and it's that trust which is like the faith that sort of creates the current of your continuance it's like my interaction with god or almighty or great intelligence whatever words you want to call it is like a game it's a i think god has a sense of humor and all of us beings that are whipping around within the existence of this almighty being, there's, there's some wonderful connection with this being. And so just imagine that someone is always watching you. And what they're doing is they're always seeing what you will do. They're seeing, you know, what choices you'll make. Because free will, if you were a God, you don't want to control beings you've created, you want those beings to live a life. You're giving them a gift of this existence. And so what do we do with it? Now the God may go, hey, Matt, you know, if you just kind of go this way, we're going the divine plan. We've, we've got this plan here. If you figure it out, because it's within the structure of the geometry, it's within the structure of the math, it's everywhere. I, I put this plan in here. But... You got to pay attention to it. You have to look for it. You just can't unconsciously go through life and think 
that it's going to happen, you have to work at it. There's a George Gurdjieff was the spiritual master of the 21st century. And he's one of the spiritual masters that I've studied that has a, a huge influence on me. I think he was one of the greatest men of the 21st century. And uh, everything that he put forward was, was uh, ahead of its time. And from what I, I never met him, and his books were not necessarily uh, that readable, but Osho, John Bennett, all these different people who are extremely intelligent and who, who are way ahead of the curve in terms of uh, most human beings point to this guy and go, this guy was doing a lot of things with a lot of people and he was a spiritual master. And why am I bringing that up now? Well, I'm rambling. Um, God. I'm looking at like this God force goes through us all. It's in, us, it, it's in all of us. It's everywhere. But the spiritual masters are the ones who acknowledge it and work with it and know that they are within this hierarchy of beings. And they're here to help. But there's a free will universe. And this planet or this world or whatever this place is seems to be a bit of a strange experiment. I think a lot of beings don't quite know what and who we are. And so most people who sort of go through school and uh, get educated and participate in society, they participate within the boundaries of what has been sort of shown to them, but it's very limited in terms of this is spiritual significance. So if anything's outside of these boundaries, if you look through the media, or if you look at anything that comes in contact with kind of God or spirituality or looking into these types of things, they're sort of made fun of. And, and it, there isn't, in my opinion, any real, sharing of knowledge of what is actually occurring. And to me, I'm finding, okay, I'm going to start to share what I've learned. And I've learned a lot. And my whole focus of attention in the last pretty much 36 years has been looking to find out, okay, if there's a God, I want to find God. And uh, these spiritual masters are telling me things about the mind. They say the mind is the problem. So my mind's thinking, okay, I'm the problem, or what's the mind, what's the thinking? And, and so I, I focused all of my attention, not on making money, not on having a family, nothing. My only attention was going, what's the truth of this God thing? Like Buddha and Jesus and these beings who's, who are like so renowned, you know, what, what they, they, they pointed to something and they said that we all have access to it. I want that, you know? But then when you start looking at religions or you start looking at teachers or you start looking at books, you know, they're, they're, everyone's saying different things. And when I was looking through all the different books, I was seeing maps. And I was seeing maps of the dimensions of spirituality and, and uh, levels like you have a physical plane and then you have like an emotional plane and then you have a mental plane and there's an etheric plane and there's a soul plane. And there's these planes of existence and different traditions had different maps saying different things about these planes and I, I may not have them right and different religions have different words to talk about these different realms. But in mainstream education, or in the media, or just in general with most people, they're not thinking or talking about these planes of existences. And the only people who are are spiritual focused masters or books, or um, I just like looking now, I'm 56. And, and so now I, I have had this, I had a switch or I had an enlightenment or I had a, I've had enough experiences to, get me to the point of, of having absolutely no doubt that I am in a story and connection to a greater intelligence that is unbelievable, that is, that is, that is so utterly good 
interesting fascinating like the whole like it's whatever god is religion and spirituality like i mean i see you know the christians are different ways of 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 worshiping god like sitting on a pew in a church listening to a priest i mean that's that's not god to me <laughs> i mean my god is being on mushrooms dancing in the forest with music on uh you know to me how much joy do you experience how much feeling do you have of connectivity with everything around you? How much love do you feel? How much gratitude do you feel? And, and, and these are the things to me that are important. Sitting in a church on a freaking wooden bench, listening to some old guy talk about something that happened 2,000 years ago, ain't my cup of tea. Not at all. So when I was growing up, my mother, bless her soul, uh, did not enforce a religion on us. So we were left to our own devices to figure out whatever we wanted. And so if you're left alone, every human is very curious. We want to figure things out. So I didn't have any sort of religion or spiritual training or anything up until my early 20s. But what I did have was a lack of meaning, and I didn't understand what this world I was in. Everything kind of seemed a bit fucked up to me. I didn't understand why were these classes with these kids. I didn't, you know, there's a lot of things about what they were telling me. You know, I could sort of hear the teacher and write what they, they were testing me on things. But I said, why are you testing me on this? Why am I learning this? Who are you and why am I here? But no one seemed to be questioning these things. And if you question things, you know, it's just, I didn't have this, obviously the same thought process now. I didn't understand why that was happening, but there was just this kind of inner angst that I covered with kind of humor to defend myself against all these humans that seemed kind of strange to me because they weren't that nice to each other. And you had to watch out because anything could happen i mean i was lucky i had a grandmother who was just a very loving being so i was used to a very nice uh, connection with, with my family as a young toddler and then you go into the real world and all of a sudden you realize oh, geez these other humans are very different from what i'm used to it and then our patterns start with how we interact with other humans and blah 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 all of a sudden, we become a different person than we are. Our essence is immortal, it's a soul. There's something in here, up there, somewhere, that is you know, simply a magnificent part of creation. And we come in here, our memory's gone, we're born into this being and existence, and then we have a life, kind of like a game. And we're born again and again and again. And what, from what I can understand is, we're trapped in this sort of technological planet prison world where these beings would take immortal souls and put them there to forget who they are and to sort of feed off their energy. That's one particular interpretation. There are a number of interpretations. Another one is that we're, uh, there was a rebellion because Mr. Lucifer and Satan and all those sort of those dudes who knows kind of the reality of really where they're at, but these are very powerful beings and they rebelled, but <laughs> you don't rebel against the big guy. It ain't going to work. Uh, and so the circuits were cut off and all they do is they just cut off these circuits and then boom, you know, the, the light, the frequency, everything's changed. And everybody, all beings, whether they were in the rebellion or not, whether they supported or not, are now cut off. And so the experiment is, is, I guess, let's say from God's point of view, he's going, hey, man, free will, do what you want. Let's see what happens. And then, you know, let's say there's 32, 34 worlds in this part of the galaxy, or maybe it's not a galaxy, maybe, you know, whatever is the existence that we're in. And then with this light off, then anything goes. And so different entities would sort of... Uh, have more free reign to do, let's say, negative things or intention to harm other beings. And so our physical universe is filled with 
all of these physical beings that may or may not have connection to the higher spiritual hierarchies and realms of these planes of existence that go sort of higher to higher or inner and inner to, to a, a more pure divine connection to God or the source of all things. And, and, you know, whatever this word is, it can't kind of convey the utter, you know, it's like a, a, a letter in a document in a program within windows trying to understand the thinking system of the operating system and the letter can only conceive of itself as a letter doesn't even know that there's a word doesn't know that there's a sentence doesn't know that it could be a paragraph doesn't know that there's a story doesn't know that there's something that writes stories doesn't know that there's the laws of existence And that's what we're like. We're like little cells in the mind of this being that is cre has created everything. And then we have these worldviews. We have these stories. We have like all these ways that humans on the planet at different times have fit, have connected to it because like prophets come in or other beings come in or however the spiritual thing works where you have to serve the lower world. You can't go up unless you serve. So the beings that are all here on this world right now have incarnated to help because something is occurring. There's some sort of awakening. There's some sort of birthing process. There's some sort of transformation that you, know, you might think it's could, it's a maybe, but maybe it's, it's just like spiritual law that our species has reached a certain point or whatever is in the experiment or maybe the circuit's getting turned back on. But I feel like I'm part of some galactic wizard council and I've been sent here to help participate in this process. But when you're born into this world, you have to, you learn about, you have to go through all these experiences of being human when you in fact may be another type of being. Or you maybe exist somewhere else and you come in here into this 3d 21st century existence within this human form and now you're going and, and your memory's gone and you're being like every other human but something you know there's some kind of like escape hatch there's something in you your intuition your direct knowing there's something that is always with your sort of immortal soul connection to the source of all that is that is always there waiting and then what happens is that we are born and then we come into the physical existence and what Gurdjieff said there was a chief feature and this was your first fear your first major oh my god this place is not quite good for me and then what happens is your personality start to form around this chief feature. And on the Enneagram, there's nine of them. And so you, this chief feature, you start to have all these experiences and you start to have all these patterns and, and you have this trauma, the negative kind of hard, you know, stuff and all this, but things are happening to you as a child and, and, and this thing is forming and this personality, which is your image, which is you, you, your, your mind thinks you are this when in fact you're this pure spiritual essence that's in there, soul, wait, kind of, I don't know if it's waiting. I don't know if it's speaking now. There's some sort of the presence, your true presence. And then that presence connected to the divine source of all that is kind of thing. So there's this immense power. But this covers it. And our mind is the connection between the spirit and the physical existence. And so then the mind gets programmed like a computer into saying kind of who you are or what you are or why you are. And then you identify with that personality and these patterns and you think that's you when this exists within you. And so the spiritual master is telling you or is saying, this is life, but you're this. And you're going to 
fight with me to defend this until you get in contact with this. And so uh, within my own development over all these years of studying and sort of trying to figure things out, you watch and you see yourself in these different stages, different stages of sort of awakening. Like to me, it goes, you're suffering and then you awaken. And then you're awakening to the fact that there's something more that you don't have to suffer. You've had some experience that told you that there's more that exists. There's a much deeper kind of connection to something. You're not quite sure what it is, but maybe you have some high drug experience or just uh, somebody gets through to you. You read a book, something and points you, you awake and you go, wait. So you become a kind of a seeker because then when you're suffering, you, you're kind of like, you have no meaning and you don't know the point of life and you're, you're getting, you've been hurt by your environment. You're, you're in this inner suffering. Buddha said that everything's suffering. The only way to get out of that is to detach, to detach from sort of like your connection to everything because it actually doesn't exist. You're this immortal soul, but you think all these things are true, but they're not. The only thing that is true is that you're a mortal soul connected to God. Everything's fucking great to use language. But over here, you know, your mind is thinking it's not great. It's interpreting reality. It's its own program. It's like an operating system that thinks it's you. You think it's you, but it's not. It's just like a, a tool. And when you begin to reprogram your mind, you're taking command of your mind and you're linking it now to your source within and your intuition is your direct knowing through your soul. But the mind is kind of like, you know, the... <laughs> It's a very kind of uh, mysterious mechanism because the mind is using the mind to talk right now. The mind is using the mind to interpret itself. But if the mind has no capacity to self-interpret, to watch and monitor and see the patterns and then have some feedback mechanism to change them, if you don't go in and reformat the mind, it kind of runs on its own. And then the person and the spiritual masters are saying, you are asleep when that is occurring. So, I mean, I didn't understand all this or understand. Along the way, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're just trying to figure things out. And the big thing is, you know, who do you listen to? Who's going to give you the truth? Who's going to assist you to see your patterns? And so we hang out with people that we, we think we want to learn from. And I've hung out with a lot of different people. Some of the mentors I didn't know, but I always felt I had something that I, could, I, I should be teaching. But a lot of people didn't seem to think what I had was that important. So I'd hang out with them, I'd help them see what they're doing. I saw them as like a spiritual master. I saw that I could help them. I, had a, I have a goal of helping 144 spiritual masters in my lifetime. I mean, one of the things I did, and this is what I <clears throat> tell anyone who sort of wants to learn what I've been coming up with is come up with seven lifetime goals write down seven lifetime goals if you've never done that do that now because it's the beginning it's the beginning of you designing your future it's the beginning of you going this is what i want to do if you never thought to write down lifetime goals you're always reacting and responding inside someone else's goals and you're done you're not going to make it you have to become a sovereign being that chooses your goals. And to me, one of them should be to choose enlightenment, to choose ascension, to choose immortality, to choose the highest aim. Why not? If you're wondering what that is, painting. Getting back to what was I getting back to? So the goals, spirituality, God, but what was the point at the very beginning? I mean, to me, this is just me beginning to teach, share my knowledge, open up without thought of whether anyone's listening or whether anyone wants this. It doesn't matter anymore. I've attained what I was aiming at. It worked. Everything's working. And I feel good about what's come through. Now it's a matter of, okay, how do I convey to other people? Because up until now, I've been camouflaged. I've been hiding. I mean, people 
who break free like this are usually killed or shot because their mission is to get rid of the dark forces or to assist humanity to sort of evolve. And right now there's, you know, groups of entities, whoever they are, that have a intention to sort of keep humans asleep, stupid, suppressed, oppressed, and then just fleece them. And uh, people either wear this or not. People either acknowledge it or not. People either get it or not. But there's this big disinformation campaign to hide that fact from people. Because if the people of the planet knew what was going on, those guys would be toast in two seconds. But they've got, you know, control of the media, control of the military complex. Like there, there's a few of them and they're smart and they've been here for generations and they play these games. And by sort of, I think there's a universal law that if they tell you what they're doing, they can get away with it. So in the movies, they foreshadow things, they futurize, they, they tell you exactly what they're doing. And, either you, and, and then it's got, kind of, well, you knew, you know, you're just being ignorant. And so what do we do about it? And part of this, everything, like there's a lot to share with you. There's a lot to share, but people go to universities for PhDs. And they get all these different courses. And in fact, they, they may not ever really learn something. I mean, I have paid the price, done the work, have an original piece of knowledge that can change your life, anyone's life, into something way better and connect to those other people doing it and change into a new paradigm of thinking for the whole planet. I mean, it could be boasting. You could think I'm full of shit. But I could give me enough time, I'll prove it to you. You know, the, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And if you ask the Almighty to be a conduit to serve the higher purpose of this divine plan, it comes through. And I think you can, you do the extent of your capacity. How much do you really surrender yourself to divine will? How much do you say, you know, and this is part of it, is going like, you can have your free will. You can do whatever you want. But there's kind of like, there's this divine plan where we sort of uh, serve creation. Or you can come in and just look for your own stuff. Get your own stuff. Satisfy your own ego. That personality is there. You don't know there's anything else. And you go, I'm just going to take what I want. And I don't care who gets hurt. And that's kind of like the attitude of, let's say, the dark forces, which have decided to go, fuck law. Fuck, you know, this shit. They've been hurt. They've been screwed. And so they're going to do it to everybody else. And so it's only when you get to a point of real forgiveness around your own personal wounds and traumas that you start to think about everybody else. If you're wounded and you're hurt and you're in pain, which all those dark forces are in some way, and they're angry, and they're angry maybe at those above, they're angry at God, they're angry at themselves, they're angry at something, something fucked with them, and they said, fuck it, I'm going to fuck with everybody else. So deep down, I think like all the dark forces, if they're, if they're truly you know, honest with themselves, is they want to heal, they want to feel love. Every being, I think, wants a high degree of pleasure. And if you're always angry or in pain or suffering, you know, it creates this, it, it changes the personality into something that is, is going to hurt others because they're so disconnected from that inner source, whatever, you know, there's this just pain. And so what's, I, I think what's got to happen on the planet right now is just we, we need healing centers, not hospitals. Because hospitals are tied into the whole pharmaceutical industry and tied into the philosophy that is more bent upon making money rather than healing people. So it's never going to work. The drugs and surgery, I mean, there's obviously parts of it that work that are undeniably good but overall you have to look at the philosophy and if 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 
nutritionalists or herbalists are not allowed to speak about healing anybody because the pharmaceutical industry sees them as competition and stops it. The level of society has reached an insanity because those forces in control that are just trying to make money and just trying to fleece everybody, they set it up that way and that's the way they've set it up. And we've all agreed to it. And we're in the middle of this big mess, this big mess that's happened for thousands of years. And now it's cleanup time. And it's either going to happen the easy way, which I think is the way that's coming through me, a loving way, a gentle way, a peaceful way, or the hard way, which is like global cataclysms and humans going through horrors they don't want to and shouldn't have to. So there's a choice right now of kind of where we're at because you, you can't keep damaging the ecosystem in a closed system and think that everything's going to be fine. Mother Earth is actually a real live being and there's much more going on beyond human species um, understanding. And currently, you know, we're, we're in this big potpourri of what is going on. Everyone, everyone's confused. They don't know what to do or how to do it. They're just a little speck in this massive thing. But there are beings who have come here specifically to bring a specific gift or something to the world to assist species to get somewhere. There's an evolutionary process that we're within. There are other groups of beings, entities, that are linked to our evolution, either in a negative way or a positive way. And I sense we're under some sort of galactic assessment process. And that if the circuits were turned off, they're turning back on, and now sort of light is being restored. And the answer is love. And it isn't a bunch of aliens coming with, with ships to destroy us, even though they might try to create that fear of us. I mean, there may be entities that have a negative viewpoint of us, but I think that there are other entities and beings that have a positive view and support us and, and understand that we are being screwed with in some way. So it's all about what you believe. You know, if you start to listen to me and you start to believe me, it, that we, we need to build a consensus reality. All of us need to start to believe certain things in order for our species to go forward. And that takes trust and that takes you know, people actually listening to what I'm talking about and, and seeing that as some sort of a unique thing that is going to help out. And then we're, we're going to build a 144,000 planetary guardian team that is going to create a new media system and essentially a governance system and show the whole world how to do things different in a fun, loving, joyful way. And this is, if you're listening to this, this is the beginning of me speaking about it in more clear, open terms. Because up until now, I've sort of, I haven't been allowed to be me. I haven't been allowed to really show what I have, either by the dark forces or the light forces. I'm not sure which ones. I'm sort of a, <laughs> a little out of control for both of them. And I don't know how to make it myself. Like at some point you have to come to terms with what you're learning, come to terms with what you're being shown, come to terms with the fact that nobody is going to understand or believe what you are experiencing. And 
all of my attention has been put on reformatting my mind and looking at, okay, how do I learn how to communicate so that I can actually read the context of where I am? I can actually read the people where they are and I can actually participate in a method that works. Because if you, if you don't match those things, that's when things kind of go off. And if you're actually trying to, let's say, transform a whole planet and the thinking of everyone to get to a place of goodness, believe me, it's uh, quite the chore. And it's impossible. Again, no one would believe me, and I understand that. And I don't, I don't think the only way you can prove anything is to give actual real experience evidence of it. And I, I know it's happening now. And I know that the tools that have come through me are starting to work and I'm starting to teach. And I'm, I'm like people, more and more people are going to go, this is really, really good. You know, we need to learn how to communicate. You know, once we really learn how to communicate without being fearful, every human's life is going to be different. But the thing is, there's this, you know, a great conflict online. There's all the media. There's everyone is talking, right? Everybody, everyone. And some people are getting attention and some people aren't. And there's this big thing. So for me to stand out amongst everyone and go, no, no, no. I'm the most important person to listen to. Forget everybody else. Especially given my history is ridiculous. And that's, you know, the humor, the humor is knowing something to be true when everyone else doesn't know it yet and doesn't believe you, but you know, at some point they're going to get it one way or the other, whether probably after I'm dead, that's my guess. Cause it's usually after you die that people, Oh, he was, he was this and that. But while you're alive, everyone's just, he is crazy. Uh, I think I'll go over here because I don't want to be associated with him. But it's only until we all start really supporting one another in our craziness because we are telling and showing the world a totally different way of being. And everything has to change. Everyone has to change. Not just the dark forces. Everybody. And I know that dancing, singing, music, food are essential parts of this, the best parts of life. This isn't going to be done with protests. This isn't going to be done with wars. This isn't going to be done with the usual way that people think they have to change things. We just have to show people an amazing way of living and show people how great we are, show people how loving we are. And then that will attract all the people who want that, which is basically everybody, right? Like who doesn't want to go to the best party in town? Who doesn't want to be part of a movement to transform the planet into something that's beautiful? Everybody. And you got to listen to the women first. The women are way ahead of the men. The men are still in the conflict mentality of violence in some manner being the hero by bludgeoning someone in the head. Be the hero and be, live a virtuous life. Be the hero and uh, honor the children. Be a hero and uh, you know, have a sense of humor. You know, the heroes today are all of those good people doing all those beautiful loving actions everywhere and uh, knowing in their hearts that they, they want goodness for everybody. So I've probably talked enough. I know that uh, people don't like talking heads. And I know that I, I don't like uh, speaking when I don't think people are listening. So I'm kind of alone a lot because I got a lot to say. And once I get going, I know it's a bit much, but um, maybe you like what I'm saying. Maybe you agree with what I'm saying. Maybe at some point you just go, you know, 
Elijah's right. And I'm going to learn some of his tools. Let's see what he's talking about. And then you can kind of go, okay, I get it. There's these conversation types. They control information flow. And when you understand, when your mind gets what they are, you can talk better, you can understand better, you can plan together, you can design together better. It creates a reference point in the mind for everyone to sort of build that new world you want to create. That's just a little bit of it. Yeah. So, thank you for listening. My name's Elijah, aka Captain Sweep. I have a very secret plan. We're building this Planetary Guardians media game. And if you want to participate, give me a message. But boy, you better get ready to be investigated. I'm not letting you in easy, but it's good. It's fun. And uh, it's about time. So see ya.